The West Michigan community is mourning the death of the Comstock Township Fire Chief. Chief Edward Switalski was hit and killed responding to a crash last night. This happened on I-94 near mile not near the mile not far from Sprinkle Road exit around 10:30. Crews were getting ready to leave the scene when a passing vehicle lost control and then hit Switalski. The driver was taken to the hospital for his injuries. Now, every time a first responder ends up on the side of the roadway, they are putting their lives in your hands. Fail to slow down or just glance at your cell phone, and you could be driving toward a tragedy. As Joe LaFergie found out, the Grand Rapids Fire Department has come up with some innovative ways to keep their crews safe. The story's the same for just about any GRFD firefighter who's answered a call on the S-curve. There has been some close calls. Ah! Lieutenant Mark Penningstreet responds from the Franklin Street Firehouse, just about a block off US 131. Cars are cutting in, you know, driving seems to be at the speed limit, cutting in at the last minute. The tragic death of Comstock Township Fire Chief Edward Switalski highlights the dangers first responders face on roadway calls. Too often, while they're attending to someone who needs help, other drivers aren't attending to good driving habits. Every year nationally, we lose about 50 to 60 tow truck operators, a dozen law enforcement officials, and a half a dozen fire personnel on the scene of incidents in the roadway. And it's not just the risk of injury and death. A few years ago, crashes involving GRFD vehicles blocking traffic lanes during accidents caused a half million dollars in damages. Rebuilding a wrecked fire truck can take up to two years. So department leaders came up with some solutions, like marking systems on the S-curve. Where we've uh, pre-engineered um, locations to park our vehicles for maximum time of visibility by the motorist approaching the incident. Those same markings will soon appear on portions of I-196. They've also reduced the time it takes to get a wrecker on the scene and clear a roadway. GRFD firefighters are also getting additional training in how to be safe at crash scenes. But perhaps the biggest idea in both size and concept is Utility 2. The fire department repainted an old public works dump truck the city was about to sell at auction, mounted lights, a siren and traffic arrow, and then borrowed an attenuator, more or less a big shock absorber on a trailer, from the state. Utility 2 began responding as the department's main traffic blocking unit. This YouTube video shows what happens when a car hits an attenuator and the safety it provides motorists as opposed to hitting a piece of fire apparatus standing still. They're hitting something that can absorb the energy rather than uh, letting the energy be absorbed by the them and their vehicle. And while it's difficult to gauge the success of something when it doesn't happen, firefighters are convinced Utility 2 has worked. There's no hard data, but we, we believe that we've reduced our um, incidences because of the... Uh, that was Joe LaFergie reporting. Now, Michigan's move over law sets fines and other penalties for drivers who don't move over when they see those flashing lights of a police car, fire truck, ambulance, or tow truck get caught and it's a $500 misdemeanor that could put you in jail for 90 days. Violate the law and hit a first responder and then it becomes a felony. Two years in prison and up to $1,000 in fines of the, if the responder is injured. Now if the responder is killed, the driver could get up to 15 years in prison and a $7,500 fine.